How's it going? Bravo Hacks here with another tutorial on SMB Exec. And for this one, we're going to go ahead and just walk through the system enumeration menu options. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to select option number one from the main menu for system enumeration. And here we have four menu items that we're going to go ahead and, and walk through. Um, the first one here is to create a host list. So let's go ahead and select option one. And it's asking me to enter my target network range in Nmap format. So my target network range here is 11.11.14.0/24. Um, of course, if you're on a penetration test or your home network, it's probably going to be different. Um, just go ahead and put that in there. You can use you know, slash eight slash sixteen. You can use any type of format that Nmap will accept. So let's go ahead and hit enter at this point. And what's doing is it's doing a quick Nmap scan and it's looking for devices with port uh, 139 and 445 open, which are, you know, SIFS SMB. Um, and it looks like it found four hosts that do have um, either one or both of those ports open. And it says right there, it's, it's storing a host file um, in, a, in the SMB exec directory that it created. Uh, and it gives you the name of that file. And it says uh, hit enter to return to main menu. So we'll go ahead and do that. Let me show you real quick what that file looks like, where it was created. So I ran SMB exec from my desktop. Um, and as you can see, it creates a log folder. Every time you run SMB exec, it's going to create this for you, just so it can keep everything in one place. So here's that host list that it said it created. So basically, what, what it's going to do is it's uh, going to create host list, and then it's going to have the network range at the end. Um, of what you scan. So you can look at it real quickly and know which uh, which segment that host list is for. So let's open it up. And then there you can see the four hosts that it did find on the network. Let's go ahead and close that back up and get back into SMB exec here. Um, so we're back at the main menu. So we're going to select option one again for system enumeration. And this time we're going to go ahead and enumerate shares. Um, let's go ahead and select option two. One great thing about this is if you look and see here is it actually already has the host list that you just ran in there. So if you run that option first, SMB exec is going to check that directory. It's going to look and see if it can find that host list. And if it does, it's going to set that as your default option. Now that doesn't mean that you can't put in a different IP address or a path to a different host list. It just tries to make it a little bit quicker and easier for you. So I'm actually going to use this host list. I'm just going to hit enter. Uh, please provide the username to authenticate as. I'm going to use an account on my domain here, uh, my password. Um, put that in. And then the domain, I'm going to use Bravo Hacks. So let's go ahead and hit enter. And you can see real quick it went through, um, printed some stuff out to us, uh, for us out to the screen. Um, tries to give a you know some statistics down here as to, to what was found. Um, so let's see. It says that the list of the host shares can be found um, you know back in that SMB exact directory that it created. Um, so let's go ahead and hit enter to return to the main menu and let's go ahead and take a look at that file that it actually created for us. So here you can see uh, the naming convention for this is basically. Um, eMylum, or what it would put in here is the account name that you actually used um, to uh, enumerate those shares, and then host.shares, and then this is actually the time, which is kind of cool, one, two, three, four. So uh, let's open that up and take a look. Um, going to open it up with gedit. And as you can see, this is, this is exactly what was echoed back on the screen. Here's the IP address. Let's just know that authentication to that IP address failed. Um, here's one. This is the the domain controller, 11.11.14.15. It gives us the shares for that, and then uh, .177 also gives us the shares. So it gives you a nice bit of information in that file that you can just look at real quickly and kind of know, you know, what's what. And sometimes that's good for trying to find the the file server on on the network during a pen test. All right, so we're at the main menu. Let's go ahead and select option one again to go back into the system enumerations menu. And uh, this time we're going to do the remote login validation. So let's select option three. Now, the reason we wrote this uh, remote login validation is 
Um, we use Metasploit on 100% of our pen tests. I mean, we love it. We love the framework. It's awesome. Um, everybody who who's um, contributed to it, you know, we owe a debt of gratitude for sure. It makes our lives a lot easier. But one of the things that we've noticed, you know, um, in using the uh, SMB login uh, option is is that it will give you um, great feedback for if the login is actually valid on the network. Again, because we actually, um, you know, we find a lot of domain cache credentials. You know, sometimes those cache credentials are old once we crack them and they're not used. Um, but we use the SMB login auxiliary scanner, um, you know, to see if those um, credentials are actually good on the network. Um, what we have found, though, is that when we use SMB login, is um, it really only checks to see if those logins are valid, but not if it can actually log in remotely to that system. So let me go ahead and show you real quickly what I mean by that. So I've already got my SMB login set up. Let me go ahead and show you the options here. And basically, um, you know, I've set it up to try to log into my domain controller on port 445. Uh, the domain is Bravo Hacks, password is password, and the user is emilum. So let's go ahead and see, we'll run it here. And as you can see, it says, you know, hey, it was a successful login, um, status success, uh, emilum and password, it was great. So at this point, you would assume that you could log into that computer. So let's go ahead and our desktop over there. I'm going to use emilum at sswrd uh, log into bravo hacks and boom as you can see we actually don't have remote login capabilities to the system so we wouldn't really be able to use that login um, you know to try to get a shell or remote access to the system let me go ahead and cancel out of this so what we've done here is we've written this um, remote access login to, to kind of, you know, go one step further and really show us, can it actually, can these credentials actually uh, be leveraged remotely on the system? So let's go ahead and use it. Uh, the first thing it's going to ask me for is a credential list, which I've created here. The main thing to note here is that the credentials need to be tab separated. That's very important. If it's not tab separated, it's not going to work properly. So all these, um, these three credentials in here are all um, tab separated values. So let's go ahead and give it the path to that user list. And mine's on root, desktop, user.list, hit enter. Again, we could put in our target IP address, we could put in a host list, or we can just use the default host list that it found um, when we did our um, system enumeration. So I'm just going to hit enter again, select the default. Uh, please provide the domain for the user account specified. Again, mine is Bravo Hacks, so I'm going to use that. And then here it's asking me, do I want to include a check for DAEA process on the systems? Um, I'm going to show that in the next step. So I'm going to go ahead and select no here, or just hit enter, which is uh, no is the default. And as you can see, it's uh, giving us some information here. So let's see what happens. We can go back in now and look in that log folder directory. And you'll see here we have two new files that are created for successful logins. And let's go ahead and open this first one up. So this is at 11.11.14.15. And as you can see, it, it only lists the credentials that it found that have successfully logged in remotely to that system. So we know that on 11.11.14.15, we could leverage these two credentials to remotely log into that. And we've got the same thing here with the .77 IP address. Um, only difference here is eMylum actually had remote login capabilities as well. So you get really good feedback. You know exactly what credentials and what systems um, those credentials have remote access to. So if we are desktoped over to, say, 177 now with the eMylum, uh, you know, we would be able to gain access to that. So let's go ahead. We're back at the main menu again. Let's go ahead and select option one to go back into the system enumerations uh, menu. And option four is to check systems for domain admin. So let me talk a little bit about that. Actually, let me go ahead and hit four and go in there. Um, the process is going to be exactly the same as the one we just followed. So... 
One of the main things when we do a penetration test, a lot of times we're able to get an account, we're able to ga gain remote access to you know a significant number of systems. The problem is, is you know we want to find right away um, which system has the domain admin process or enterprise admin process running on it. The reason for that being, uh, most of the time we want to create our own account on the domain controller and we want to escalate that account to the level of domain admin or enterprise admin. Now we all know that domain admin, enterprise admin is not the end game, but it definitely helps you move more freely around the network. The main thing that I use it for is as soon as my domain admin account's created is I actually dump the uh, hashes off the domain controller um, so that I can crack those. So if my account actually gets caught and disabled, uh, it doesn't matter because I've already pulled all the other hashes for every user off of the network and now I have valid logins that I know that I can use throughout the network. Uh, which most likely include domain admin and enterprise admin logins. So they're not going to turn their own stuff off most of the time um, or change the passwords unless they, they really know or recognize that, that something wrong is going on. But for the most part, at that point, we're looking like you know a valid login, we're looking like valid traffic, and that's really what we want. We want to kind of blend in and, and not stand out. So... Um, the other thing, too, I want to make sure that I note is, um, you know, this is not new. Um, this isn't the first time this has been done. I understand that. Um, there's a lot of great blogs out there. However, you know, this is important to have this um, within this tool, I think, I believe. It's it's automated. It makes it easy for you. It helps you find that what we call the, uh, the quote-unquote diamond in the rough. So we can go after one system, um, and we know uh, that one system has domain admin. So we're not, you know gaining remote access to hundreds of systems and, and sending up flares. So to everybody else who's done this before, um, kudos. I uh, want to thank you again, a uh, debt of gratitude. Um, so let's go ahead and, and hop right in here. So what we're looking at is um, it's asking us to provide the path to credential list. Again, it's the same thing. So you just want to make sure that your credential list is tab separated. So I'm going to go ahead and type in the, the path here the full path is root desktop user.list hit enter same thing again we could put in our target IP we can put a path to a different host list or we can just hit enter to accept the host list that's already uh, exists in the log folder so I'm gonna do that I'm gonna go ahead and just hit enter here uh, provide the domain for the user account specified Bravo hacks hit enter and you can see we're getting some feedback now. And once it's finished, I'll go back and I'll go into the log folder and show you um, exactly what uh, it looks like. Okay, looks like we're done there. So you'll notice here now we have the systems with da dot list, and then let's go ahead and open that up. And what we have here is we have a nice list for us of the system IP address and the account. And it basically states that a domain admin account uh, is logged in or running a process on that system. And you can see we've got, uh, looks like two unique systems that actually have um, you know, domain admins either logged in or running a process. Um, so basically, um, the power behind this is really what we're doing is we're getting onto a system. We're running a, a couple of Windows commands. Um, basically, we're running task list and we're running qwinsta. And a task list looks at, you know, what tasks are being run uh, and by who, and then we grab the usernames out of that. And then QWinsta is who's logged in at that time, and we grab the usernames out of that. We make that, we make a list out of that, and then we also, on the very first system that this runs on, it will go out and it'll run like the net group domain admins um, command, and it'll create a list from that. So it's creating a list of uh, one list of all the domain admins and enterprise admins that exist in that domain, and that's one list. And then the second list, it's creating, as we stated before, um, you know, usernames from the task list and usernames that are currently logged into the system. And then all it's doing is it's comparing those and saying, okay, does you know, the logged in user exist in the domain admin, enterprise admin list that we created? If it does, it reports back to us, and then we know. So I hope that makes sense to you guys. I hope this was uh, beneficial. I hope you guys like this tutorial. Um, of course, you can always hit me up at jbrov.hacks at gmail.com. And um, I'll see you guys on the next one. Thank you.